Hello, my beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Today, I have with me Perla K. Carino, who is the author of Twisted Affections. Um, You can find her Instagram and Facebook at perla.k.carino.author. Um, the show note there the links are going to be in the show notes in case you want to check it out and I highly recommend it um how are you doing Perla hi it's great to see you it's great to have you thank you for joining me um today we're going to talk about all your cool poems um and I I noticed that a lot of the um a lot of them they involve um addiction and uh, breaking generational trauma and uh postpartum that one and like a bunch of other topics the postpartum one though like one of the one of the quotes that you had on Instagram it really it caught my eye um because I I'm not a mom but I and. I can't imagine what postpartum really is. Like a lot of people are the things that I've read is like, oh, it's just depression. It's, you know, but I can't even fathom. I like, I love kids, but I'm not even a mom. So I can't even fathom like right. you know, what that feels like. Um, did you, you saw, I imagine you suffered from uh, postpartum, right? I did. And that's the thing is I worked with kids before. Mm-hmm. I really wanted my child. We were very prepared for her. And everybody with postpartum, their symptoms can really range and have Mm -hmm. all different symptoms. And so in my poem, it's called Phantom Kicks. Oh, I messed up. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) That's fine. Um, So it's about phantom kicks. And a lot of doctors don't talk about this. And a lot of moms don't even realize there's a name for it. And I've seen in mom groups where women say, oh, I've had that for more than 10 years. I didn't know that was actually a thing. No. Yeah. Phantom kicks. And it's like you can really feel them like inside of you. Right. Oh, my God. And you could even see your child and still in your mind say, wait, but it feels like they're still inside of me. Oh, wow. So that made now that makes sense because the the quote um is but it's not my child's kick for she is in her crib and slumbered thick like I was that's amazing like I couldn't I can't even uh imagine like those phantom kicks and like how how does that really like uh how did that feel like how it's yeah. weird because it makes you feel like you're not bonded to your child even if you love them and you care for them and you physically care for them, mm-hmm. still it kind of creates a wedge between you feeling like you're their parent and like they actually came from you. Even though like you birthed them. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. And you could even have proof that they were yours. And still I felt like mine wasn't mine. And how did you deal with like, like how have have you or do you still feel that way or like how did you come out of that if you have so it took me more than a year oh, wow. to feel like my daughter was mine oh, wow. and I, I had wanted her so much and mm-hmm. I was able to physically care for her perfectly probably mm-hmm. even too meticulously because I had experience taking care of babies before mm-hmm. but still it just after her first birthday was when I started feeling like, oh, there's a little bit of emotion here now, which is horrible. It, it is. Feels, it feels so just guilt worthy. Wow. Um, it and is she is she one now or like it, it was this no. years ago? No. Yes, this was years ago. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but oh. still, it the feelings can come back. They can be slick, cyclical mm-hmm. after. Even though like you're technically cured from postpartum. I didn't know that. And is she your only daughter? Or like yes. Do you have a, yes. Oh mm-hmm. wow. Um were was writing like the poems like something that helped you kind of go like, you know, work through that those emotions and that feeling? Definitely, especially since um for a lot of people they don't want to talk about this. 
Mm-hmm. And I was even worried about who can I tell about this that won't judge me mm-hmm. as a mom and as a human. Mm-hmm. And so it was nice to be able to get it down. And actually it felt real because mm-hmm. it was on paper. It was what I had experienced. And now there was some proof of it. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And were you always a, a creative person? I'd say so. I started writing poetry in middle school. Oh, wow. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, um, the series I actually started um, a little bit after I started college. And it's all just been kind of related in my writing. So I pieced mm-hmm. it all together because it was kind of the same topic-ish. Mm-hmm. And that that's that's got to be interesting since you've been piecing it for such a long time, where like you can see the development in your perspective of like those different things, right? Right, definitely. And uh, it, mm-hmm. in the past year or two, you can see how things have gotten a little more lighthearted and a little a little more hopeful. So it is interesting to see that shift as well. That's cool. And I I feel like writing really lets us, I think I I like to think of it like word vomit, just like word vomit everything. And it's like, like it's what a diary does for you, where it just lets you kind of like vent it out. Um, Are you like, is uh, being an author, like your profession and stuff like that? Like, this is my first and probably only book since I've been working slowly on these poems for more than 11 years. Oh, wow. And so I just figured, okay, let's put them all together and let's just make a thing of it. (laughs) (laughs) So might as uh, well. Yeah, might as well. Did you, um, you, I, I saw that it's like a recent decision, like in terms of like actually like putting it out there and stuff like that. I saw you, you're starting on the podcast tour. Right. <laughs> yes, it's exciting. And yeah, actually getting a Facebook and everything and mm-hmm. getting some followers. So it's been really exciting. Oh, that's awesome. Um I I, I read the the poem bound to you that you that you sent me. Let me tell you, that poem kind of moved me. Like it, it moved me. It was, uh, it was like I, I felt like I was her in the sense of like being a like how much she was like writing, and then that that person coming in and just tearing it up and kind of not supporting that creative action. Like, how, how did that come to you? Like, what what sparked that? So that poem involves like long-term partner abuse. And Mm -hmm. while I've been through some partner abuse, it wasn't long-term. And this was kind of me thinking, well, what's going to happen if I don't leave this situation? Mm -hmm. And the poem is also about kind of leaving the victimhood mentality because Mm -hmm. you find at the end that her writing about these experiences were the only thing keeping her attached to her abuser. And so that was kind of my way of saying, okay, I'm done with writing these things. Let's move on to the new things to write about. That's wow. Uh, Cause like I, when I, when I saw, when I read how like he like ripped it up and everything, like the way I saw that was like, it was like the symbolic like representation of like, okay, this was the last straw. Like her, she literally saw the affection, the little bit of affection she had left for him just torn up and he was happy about that like I was like wow like I love the (laughs) the metaphor and yeah right and some of my poems do have a bit of fantasy in them so in that one him ripping it up makes her just completely forget who he even is Mm -hmm. and so you'll see a little bit of fantasy woven into my other poems as well that's really cool I I didn't even pick up on on that being that like I took that literal like she looked up like who are you no <laughs> it's that Miami mentality of like we're gonna fight right now <laughs> like, who are you to come here and just like rip my stuff up oh no um I didn't realize that was the fantasy I, but I'm telling you that poem like I was like wow no I I can't wait for 
to read all the other ones. Um, when are you releasing the the book? January. January for the oh. new year. Yep. Ooh, that's exciting. New yes. year. New like, year. Okay. Um where where are you gonna like where can listeners like find it once it does come out? Amazon. And Amazon. Oh. Yep, Amazon. Okay. Well, you're definitely gonna have to send me a link so that I can yeah. add it to there <laughs> to when I uh, go to release. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but talk to me a little bit more about you, like how you know. Uh as you can tell, I'm also kind of new and yeah. all this. So we're we're working through this together. Um, but talk to me a little bit more about you. Like how how did you come like hmm whatever i'm being nonsense right now i'm so sorry oh so i like Mm -hmm. um i like learning about mythology Mm -hmm. and uh philosophies and theologies and as well as just kind of noticing the psychology of the relationships around me Mm -hmm. and so in my book it's not only things i've experienced but things that i've experienced in the relationships around me as well and not just love relationships like partners but between multi-generations between pets and their owners and god and creation Mm -hmm. and uh us and our bodies so just all different kinds of relationships and how the whole thing with twisted affections is that a lot of times they're very complex and toxic yet Mm -hmm. beautiful in a weird way Mm mm-hmm in in a very weird way (laughs) because you're absolutely right sometimes like relationships that don't suit you you just somehow you find a way to because like you're right right. like there is a beauty to to that that relationship and I think uh when when you're in one of those type of relationships it's like my mom you would always say like the only thing that you that you can see is out there the only people that really know what goes on in that relationship and how those is those two people like and how each other feel and stuff so yeah um
Um, so, and that's an interesting, like, I, I feel like that's a category that happens in the United States where, it, and I don't mean to say like category, like as if we're all like in little boxes. Um, but I, I've noticed that that's a thing that happens that like, uh, you know, we have, because we're so like multicultural here in the, in the United States that it like, you know, you, you end up having kids that are from an ethnic, like a, a different background culturally. And then sometimes they can't even communicate with like the other family members. Like my, my right. nephew is exactly like that. My, like. My um, grandmother, she speaks only Spanish. My nephew only speaks English. He can understand the Spanish. Can you like? Yeah, he can, I can yeah, understand a lot. You can understand it, but you can't like he can't speak back in Spanish. Like he has to respond in English. Like, right. That's yeah. Yeah. That's a challenge. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe it is like a that could also be a generational trauma. I don't really know if, mm -hmm. you know, if all of our cousins can't speak it, then that's you know, it has to tell you something. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no. And that, that tells you something about like the culture that like you grew up in, in terms of society wise, because it was so frowned upon. It's frowned upon that you don't know it. And then you're not even allowed to like speak it. So you can't even practice even if you did want to. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and then now know. my kid knows more than I do. So <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i know <laughs> oh my gosh yeah I'm, I'm good at teaching her but not myself mm. like, okay i guess <laughs> well the good thing is that you're you're working on that with them right. so that at least they have the opportunity to you know and they they don't experience the same thing that you the hardships that you you probably had to go through mm -hmm. um Hmm. okay i'm sorry i, I you're good now we're good um so i wanted one of the the other things that like i like to talk about here aside from like just getting to know the the podcaster is uh not the podcast oh my god i'm sorry perla <laughs> you're good <laughs> Okay. Um, do you do other like creative works or like is anybody, uh, do you do other creative works? Uh, yeah. So I do a lot of like dance and uh, a little bit of sculpting and flower mm -hmm. arranging, kind of whatever the mood suits. Okay. The, the sculpting is interesting. Like, do you, is that like have you made anything like cool like like what what are some type of things that you've made uh just little things out of polymer clay mm -hmm. uh so like little tiny animals and things like that i'm not very good but still <laughs> <laughs> no yeah no that's like during covid we had a lot of time no yeah that, <laughs> pick up new skills and practice <laughs> right or put down a put down a non skill <laughs> <laughs> forget about that one oh uh, no it's fine um how, is any one of your like do you think like one of your family members has also been creative is that something that is normalized within your family unit um so I found out after this that my dad also writes poetry and wrote in college and I never knew that until after I told him about my book <laughs> so that's pretty funny um mm -hmm. yeah I think it wasn't it wasn't so much about like creating just for fun mm -hmm. it was more of like writing to try to you know be a writer as a job that kind of thing and I'm one of those people where I have my hobbies and then I have my work mm -hmm. and so I do do some creative things at work like event planning and like making things but mm -hmm. I yeah it's definitely a separation yeah but I think like uh I think just being able to like do it 
creativity is like all around us and we're we're doing it even like as we um you know have conversations like we meet new people and and stuff like that so creativity is definitely a good avenue and it's a good way to connect it was when you found out that like your dad um also wrote poetry did that like spark any cool connections or like new new ways of like communicating or something yeah well he was scared for me to read them because apparently he had showed his grandmother Mm. years ago and she didn't have a good reaction to them Oh my God. Like, because his were very dark and depressing. And she mm-hmm. said, oh, I hope you don't feel that way now. Oh, <laughs> and that was that was all she said. So, so I said, OK, I need to read them now. Mm-hmm. And I read them and I was like, these are really good. I like them. And yeah, so it was nice to be able to, you know, give him that affirmation, but mm-hmm. also connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. I think that's the that's the beauty of like doing like poetry and and writing is like you really get into like the thoughts of of somebody like the into somebody else's head and that sucks that she couldn't that no it it is what it is because everybody has their interpretation of life but the fact that he he it's interesting that he used the poetry to be able to express those like dark feelings you know um is is i i feel like uh it comes in into that generational trauma of like instead of validating (laughs) what it is that he was like thinking and feeling she was just like uh like (laughs) what am i supposed to do with this information what is wrong with you (laughs) oh my god (laughs) oh my gosh that's cool that's really cool that you were able to like connect with him in in a deeper way and like who knows what that what that meant to him you know right um do you see do you find yourself like doing how how old is your daughter if i may ask uh she is i don't know if i want to say (laughs) no that's fine that's fine then um but what i was gonna ask because i i'm not a mom yet so i was like thinking to myself I've always thought like when I were to have a a child like I do creative things with them like those finger paints so I wanted to ask is that something that you do with your daughter where do you guys do like some creative thing together like so it's strange because I find that to be difficult um so I feel the need to be like meticulous about the things I do with her and the things I teach her Mm -hmm. and So it has been interesting for me to go back and get like toys from my childhood Mm -hmm. and kind of heal in that way and play with her in that way. So like we've been playing with Polly Pockets. Oh, wow. And (laughs) and so it's and it's interesting because like when you're just playing, you know, make believe with these little toys, you're like, okay, yeah, she's swimming. Mm -hmm. Okay, like go to sleep. Okay, wake up and swim some more. And (laughs) It's a weird way of being creative and it's it's hard. It's hard to be a kid when you're a grown up. You know, you want to you want to be teaching something rather mm-hmm. than just exploring and using your imagination. That that's so true. You know, I didn't even think of that. You're you're so right. Like as grown-ups, I feel like we're constantly trying to teach instead of just being kids. It means productivity. Like- yes 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 i think it's our culture it's just i feel like it's it's us that we we just need and that go 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 type of mentality like everything you do needs to be productive right it needs to be towards something and kids don't have that mentality they just they just do because they're doing it's like why why not (laughs) you know like you can't (laughs) right and if you know you if you make some art you need to finish it Mm-hmm. and at least so maybe you can show it off mm-hmm. and well they'll just scribble and then throw that paper away and then mm-hmm. scribble again and throw that paper away you're like but you're wasting all this paper they don't care even if they make something cool they'll be like oh whatever it's fine hey. I, it's done it's in the past i made it right <laughs> you're so right oh you're so right there's so many times where i've done a painting and i'm just like halfway through i'm like i can't finish this 
and right? it just stays. And then I see it and I'm like, oh my God, I need to finish this. Yeah. But no, def- definitely. And kids have such creative freedom for that. Like it, they have mm, creative freedom though. They just, they have a freedom and I think it's from that same, those like rules and norms that we um, have given ourselves and that we are more aware of as adults. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's also a thing that I was like reading um, where it's like when you, when you create something, like you want to show it off, like that, what you mentioned, like where you want to show it off. But this author's like, that's not true creativity. That's just the ego. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I guess it depends on what it's about, though. Because that's part of my thing is that it's not so much showing it off as it is that I feel like a lot of these poem topics are things that could maybe help somebody else. Mm-hmm. that's going through that or that's trying to heal through whatever the topic is mm-hmm. yeah like uh give them like context and and your perspective like not not your perspective but like um that support like knowing that somebody else has also gone gone through these things and you know is healing towards them right definitely um do you think that having like a creative outlet is uh like valuable you know oh definitely um yeah even it can be helpful even at work Mm -hmm. um during my lunch breaks during a really tough job I was at I would just sit and draw ribbons just because it was the same kind of thing over and over again Mm -hmm. but I would just draw that and it just kind of got me through the day <laughs> of knowing, okay, I could do 30 minutes of drawing. <laughs> and yeah, um, I mean, I've always loved drawing and painting. Um, mm-hmm. I had an art class in school that actually ruined it for me, though. So oh, wow. the teacher just, it wasn't even just me, though. I knew another student who loved drawing and he was very good at it. And mm-hmm. he got very frustrated because he was like, I thought this class would, you know, help me to improve my skill and Mm -hmm. techniques, but it's making my drawing worse (laughs) because the teacher was just so critical and strict and it was really sad and it just kind of like demotivated everyone. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, like resonate uh, completely with that 100%. The, that's why like the, like, I've I've taken like uh like college classes and then they they're always trying to treat you this like this specific type of technique and it's like can we just like do it and let it be what it is like I understand technique is important but at the same time where does it start hindering that ability to just be free floating with things alrighty so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up um any last words Perla. No, thank you for having me. It's been really great talking to you. Yeah, great. Um, it's been great talking to you too, Perla. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. And I'm looking forward to Twisted Affection. <laughs> it's coming yeah. out in January. Um, everybody check out um, Perla's stuff, please. Uh, thank you again for listening. Everybody stay creative. <laughs> Bye.